Hey guys, welcome back to the Wild Charles Show. Today I am hanging out at the Florida Keys Turtle Hospital with Betty Zickelbach. And she is showing us around and showing us all the cool turtles that they help rescue. They have all kinds of reasons they come into the turtle rescue. Some of them have various forms of turtle cancer. Sometimes they get sick, sometimes they get hit by boats. And this is a baby turtle right here. Oh, what, what's it? Hi, Charles. This is Neptune. Neptune. Neptune is a post hatchling, which means not a tiny baby, but hatched out last summer. Last here summer. Here in the Florida Keys, and he's a loggerhead sea turtle. Ooh loggerhead sea turtle. And if we take good care of them and our oceans will live upwards of a hundred years. So how did he come here? How did he how come did he here? end up at the turtle hospital? Good question. Well sea turtles hatch from eggs and when they hatch from the eggs they come up out of the sand and they look for the light of the night sky to find the ocean. Unfortunately a lot of coastal development there's artificial light so sometimes these guys come up and they don't see the lights. And they the go to the sky. shore? And they go to the shore. Oh no! So this little one was following the wrong light, used up all his so energy. So he was going into town he rather than going, going out to sea. He was going into town, exactly. So somebody found him and brought him in and he was teeny tiny, it would fit in the palm of your hand. They hatch out of an egg the size of a ping pong ball. And fortunately he was found and now he's part of a very special permit and a Head Start program. And what that means is we will keep Neptune until his shell or carapace is 45 centimeters long and is about two to three years and that will give him a much better survival chance out in the wild. Because they have a ton of pres predators too, everything right? Everything eats baby sea turtles. I've seen in National Geographic where oh, they're kind yeah. of coming across and then everything is coming down again. Yeah, and that's everything why those mamas lay so many eggs. You know, nature is good to them. Everything, birds, fish, sharks as we know, everything eats baby sea turtles. But this guy will have a lot better chance of survival out there. We're going to give him a little can, scrub. Yeah. Can we? Uh, oh, you're going to scrub him. We're going to give him a bath. scrub. And this is how the turtle gets a bath, a guys. Bath. If he were out in the wild, there would be cleaner fish and shrimp keeping that algae off his shell. But we don't have that at the turtle hospital, so we're just going to give him a little scrub. And you can see that tickles. <laughs> it's like a back scratch. Yep, they like. Most of them like it. Do they actually, they can actually feel it through the shell? They can feel it. Their shells are made of keratin, like our fingernails. Like our fingernails, so they like that. And, and there's a lot of nerves in there because their spine runs right down the back of the shell. <laughs> but you can see, he's going to be all cleaned up. <laughs> there you go, little buddy. And if you look at the profile of their beak, um, they have a little tooth, which this one is gone, but when they're tiny babies, they have a little tooth there called an egg tooth. A little egg tooth, so they can chip out. That's how they get out of their egg. And as they and grow, that just, bl there. yeah, that just blends into their shell. And if you look at that pattern on the side of their head, it's pretty intricate. See how beautiful that is? That's individual to each animal. So it's similar to our fingerprints. Researchers are looking at that to identify it's individual unique. animals. It's unique. So you can actually tell different turtles apart by that by the uh, pattern, pattern on the side. On the side. Yep. Wow. It's pretty amazing. Does it change over time or is it like grow as it age or like that same? for a hundred years. So we're gonna be years. able to see that pattern in a hundred years and know it's, know this it's little, that turtle. little Neptune, yep. So this is a brand new rescue that just got brought into the uh, turtle hospital. Um, can you tell us about it? Where sure. where where this um, is Randall. Randall's a juvenile green sea turtle, has a fiber papilloma virus, which is a pretty scary disease, affects over fifty percent of the green sea turtle population in and around developed islands. So unfortunately, we see a lot of turtles like this. And if you take a close look at Randall, you can see Randall's eyes are covered in those horrific tumors. Yeah, it looks like she's got like big tumors on her eyes and on, on, on her fins too. She does. And um, if, if I flipped her over, you'd see a lot of those tumors. Are they on her belly as well? On her belly as well. Wow. Um, so it, it's quite the process to get this turtle better. And the first thing we do is take a look at the inside to make sure there's no internal tumors. If there's internal tumors, we have so to... So they get this actually inside too? How, how, how much of a problem is this, like, these tumors? I mean, how many tur... Uh, out of the percentage of turtles that are out there, like, how many are getting these? The green sea turtle population in and around these islands, 50 to 70 percent. 70 percent of sea turtles are getting these tumors? These tumors, yeah. It's a pretty scary thing. And what we ask people to think about is, you know, even if you don't live near the ocean, you know, what causes our water to, to be dirty is even if you're in the middle of the country and you're putting stuff on your lawn to maybe kill your weeds, you need to think about that because that's eventually it's going to find the water source and get out to our oceans. 
These animals have been on our planet 200 million years. If you can even think about that. They were here before dinosaurs. 200 million years, guys. 200 million years. So they're sentinels for their species, and they're telling us a lot about our marine ecosystem. So the fact that they're getting these tumors is not a good sign. We need to pay attention. So they think that like chemicals and environmental factors are causing this disease, right? Well, or it's a like virus that's there. It's kind of like the human herpes virus. It's in 90% of the population, about 60% of the population. It shows itself. But pretty much every turtle they test has some form of this virus in their skin. And it's certain stressors, like environmental stressors, so it's water when quality. So it's when they're already stressed, and they're already under under pressure physically, right. then this, this virus kind of is able to arise. And, it affects and, and their immune system, exactly that. And then here come those tumors. And the tumors that you can see with the eyes being covered, she can no longer find her food. So out in the wild, she would not be able to find food, and she would eventually starve to death. So this is one lucky turtle. Somebody so found you, it floating. Yeah, so tell, how did you... Uh, how did come to the, the hospital? Well, we depend on the great visitors to the Keys. They come down and they're out there fishing, diving, they're on our waters. And what we try to do is educate them what does a sick turtle look like. So if they're out there and they see a turtle like this, they give us a call or if they don't have our number, they can radio the Coast Guard and they'll get some help and bring that so the Coast Guard will it. actually step in and help find a sea turtle? They will. That's they'll awesome. help find a sea turtle, especially the really big ones. We need those strong Coast Guard people to help us bring those turtles in. Really cool. Once you do all the surgeries on the turtles, like, like, will they recover fully, or will the tumors come back? Is it like cancer with humans, where you kind of got to watch it and see what happens, or how does that work? It's more like the chickenpox virus, and I'm not saying that scientifically, but what we see is we can get rid of all those tumors and get her strong and healthy. We keep them for nine to twelve months after okay. their last surgery, and make sure they don't regrow. And when they don't regrow, they seem to never regrow. They never regrow. So they, they basically almost grow an immunity to it later after they exactly. recover. Exactly. They, they beat they it an and antibody. then they don't get it again. That's what we believe and we're working so on So that's encouraging now. and that's a positive thing about this. So yeah. And we've released the... over 2,000 turtles back to the wild. 2,000 turtles? That we've been working on turtles. Whoa. So, so this is another turtle this is that, another that came turtle, in. And this is actually no name. And no name. say, why doesn't she have a name? Well, we have a no-name key here in the Florida Keys, so that is her name, no name. She came from the no-name Florida <laughs> Key, guys. That's why she doesn't have a name. So, and if you if take a close look, you can see she had horrible tumors on her eyes. And wow, look at her now. I mean, those are huge. She's looking up. Um, so she went to the veterinary ophthalmologist on January 12th, just a couple weeks ago. And if you look at her now, guys, she doesn't have any tumors on her eyes that she can actually see. She's still got some tumors on the back, though. She does. She has quite a few surgeries ahead of her, but she still has low blood values, so we want to get her healthy enough okay. with those surgeries. But we take the eye tumors off because if they infringe on the cornea and she goes blind, then she's remaining. Do survive. some of the sea turtles actually go blind? Yes. So this guy right here, so here's a question. We've been calling them she's are the, how do you tell male and female on sea turtles? Well, like when you're looking at them, is there a way to tell? There is, but the challenge is this is too young to tell, if you can believe it. This is a this is too young. Yeah, it's a sub-adult, which means she or he is under 20 years of age. And sea turtles don't reach sexual maturity until they're 20 to 25 years old. So you can't tell what gender they are till they're like 22. Till they're 22, right. And the males wow. at that time grow a tail much longer than their shell. So if you're in the wild and you see a sea turtle that has a long tail, a long tail. you know it's a male. You know it's a male. And it's at least 20 and years old. And it's at least 20 years old. That is cool. I, I wouldn't even, I would not know that. So that's why you call most of them she, right? That's so why you don't, we call most okay. of them she. Now when we do that endoscopy, where we look in the body cavity, we yeah. can at that time look at the gonads and we can determine And you can determine the there from like when you do that, okay. So with the little green sometimes we know, but it's an important thing to talk about their gender because we know that our environment is changing mm -hmm. with the climate and our summers are getting much hotter here in the state of Florida. Sea turtle gender sex is determined by the temperature of the sand. I've heard that. So so how is that affecting things down here right now? A lot. Because girls are hot and boys are cool, and that's going to help you to remember. So on hot summers and hot sand, the nest produces mostly females. And okay. on cooler sand, cooler summers, mostly males. The past few years in the state of Florida have been the hottest summers on record, 
and we are seeing like 99% females. Wow, like 99% of the new sea turtle hatchlings are, are females because of the temperature of the sand because the summers are warming up so much, guys. Yes, so some of the hatchlings aren't even surviving because of the heat of the sand and the ones that are are females. So you can imagine over wow. time what that's going to do to the population. So there's like a shortage of guys. I mean, I guess that's great for the sea turtle guys, right? But not good for like the population in terms of keeping sea turtles breeding and... and, and exactly, and, and for the global population. And the study just came out of Australia and they're finding the same thing. 99% of their sea turtles are females. Are females, wow. Looking at this guy right here, I see that there's like some shell damage or there's like, like you got like little like floats on the side of the his or her shell. We do this animal, it's a loggerhead sea turtle, and they're carnivores. They're opportunistic feeders, so they eat pretty much anything. So they get in trouble. They get in trouble with eating trash. They even get in trouble, they eat other sea creatures. If they eat too many crustaceans with a lot of shell and a little bit of meat, that'll impact in their intestines. So this animal is actually suffering from an intestinal impacting. Okay. There's some people can probably relate to that. So she's actually on the same medication. She's on lactulose. Bino for the gas. Bino. So we're giving her this, a this turtle has <laughs> gas and is on Bino. And that's why she's floating from that intestinal gas and the infection in there. So she's also on a broad spectrum antibiotic. She might antibiotic. be able to get like a commercial endorsement kind of after Possibly. this. Possibly. And she's taking mineral oil. And the good news is she's starting to pass a lot of those shells that were blocking the intestine. So eventually when that infection goes away and the infection passed, she'll go back to the bottom which is a very important thing for a sea turtle because that's where they find their food. So she can't go down the bottom right now. She is cannot. that why she's kind of swimming along the top she's of the, swimming, the tank right here she now? She doesn't like being at the surface. Um, and that's why these floats are here. If they weren't there, the gas tends to go to one side and she would and be she'll like be skin. sideways. Right, so we, ah, we put okay. these floats on here to help her to be more comfortable in the water. You can see there's two Velcro strips and that's because that gas will move from side to side so we'll adjust those floats accordingly. We don't want her to use all her energy just trying to stay right in the stay, water. Just to stay stable. Wow. So what kind of treatment is she going to get? She's on just like uh, she's lactose, on, on, on that. mineral oil, and the good thing is she's eating. And so how long till you know uh, if that's going to work? We do a couple things. We fall with x-rays, radiographs, so we'll take okay. a look and we can actually see that impaction moving through her system. The other thing is once that infection's gone and the gas goes away, she'll, she'll be on the bottom. She'll, so you'll, one you'll day we'll come she'll, in she'll, and she'll, she'll be she'll on be the bottom. Back down and you'll be like, that's great. take it to the ocean. She's yep. going back free after that. Yep. Awesome. So this is actually inside the sea turtle hospital, and this is a sea turtle operating room. This looks super high tech. You've got an operating table. You have a CAT scan right there, right? X-ray. X-ray, X-ray. Um, all this crazy gear. You use all this to treat sea turtles? To help sea turtles. This is a surgery suite. We have one or two surgery days a week. Um, that's a CO2 and that's what we use to remove those tumors. That's what you use to remove all those tumors we saw earlier on the turtles, guys. They do it right here. They bring in the turtle, and you actually, you, you give them anesthesia? We put them under anesthesia. You can see the bag there. We actually intubate them, where we put a tube into their lungs through their trachea and breathe through them through surgery. We put them under so they don't feel anything, and then we resuscitate them and bring them back and start the healing wow. process. Wow, yeah. that seems really super complex. <laughs> It's involved. It's involved. So you are actually even saying that you guys are researching how to treat turtles with chemotherapy, yes, right? Yes, alternative treatments for these fiber papilloma tumors. We're partnering with the University of Florida and we've done ele electrochemotherapy for the first time in sea turtles in the United States just last weekend here. The wow, just last weekend. This just okay. happened. You guys are like cutting edge. Cutting edge and we're already seeing those tumors start to shrink. So it's With the chemotherapy. So, with the chemotherapy. So it may be a new way to treat these, Alternative right? treatment that you wouldn't have to put them under anesthesia. It would be you wouldn't less have to cut them away, the less invasive. Correct. Wow, that's, that is incredible. And you are also saying that you do uh, you blood transfusions? Like blood turtles transfusions, get blood? they get blood. We have, have, you saw some of those bubble butts out there yeah, and they're yeah. healthy besides, so they're our blood donors. So when we have a sick turtle come in with a low blood volume, we'll get one of our donors and we'll take that good healthy blood and transfuse it into a sick turtle and they're saving turtles lives. Now do all turtles have the same kind of blood or do they have like different blood types That's where it's like you have to be a match in order to 
to give blood as a turtle? That's a good question. Right now we go species to species, but we have so much to learn and we're right now in another research project with the University of Florida and UC Davis Veterinary College on the west coast and we're studying turtle blood. So not only are they saving turtles that have been injured, they're also learning a lot of stuff about turtles that we don't even know about, right? There's things about that. turtle blood that we don't know, there's things about they're researching and learning new things so that they so can help the turtles learn. both here and in the wild. Right, because we're working to save a species. So I see this huge pool right behind us. What is this all about? There's turtles swimming around, some of them are kind of tipsy. What What's up with that? This is a natural tidal pool, and actually, I see our founder director Richie Moretti heading this way, and he can tell you This is the founder about, of the, yeah, the Sea Turtle this Hospital. This is where it all started with Richie. Richie, this you is guys Charles. are going to meet the founder of the Sea Turtle Hospital right here, Richard. 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 Tell us. Tell us about the the pool here. So I wound up in the motel down in the Keys. So okay. Loved it. Came down on the weekends. Who wouldn't? I mean, a motel down in the Keys is tropical, it's yeah. warm, it's sunny. And the fishing's good. And the fishing it's is good. good. Well, the lady that moved down with me, Tina Brown, uh, she wanted to be a fishing captain, and I wanted to fish the competitive tournaments offshore. Okay. So she bought a 25-foot boat, and I bought a 50-foot boat. And we went fishing. What well, she caught a tarpon under the seven mile bridge. She caught a tarpon, okay. Six foot long under the seven mile bridge. And she'd been working for months to catch one. Well, in those days they used to kill them just to get their picture. We've gotten a lot smarter than that now. So she didn't want to kill it. She didn't want to let it go. So we said, why don't we throw it in the old saltwater pool? So this pool is here? This pool was built in 1948. When, when 1948? This when this motel was built, there wasn't a lot of fresh water in the Keys. So what they would do is they would dig a hole, put a walkway around it, call it a pool, and it would have pipes that connect. Was this a swimming bay. pool? This was a swimming pool for the motel back in 1948. The rescue pool at the Turtle Hospital was a swimming pool in 1948. Right. And now it's helping all these turtles. Exactly. Wow. Well, we filled it with fish. It was so you much fun having it with our, fish. And, and the schools found out about all the fish and said, can we bring the children by to see the fish? Well, Tina and I, we'd be out on the outer islands and we'd find conch and a starfish up on the beach. Yeah. We had to be children throwing live animals on the beach. So we thought, well, if we're going to see kids, we'll teach them to be nice to the animals. That's awesome. And I have no education in that. And, and you know, we would teach them very basic things like when you take something out of the ocean, hold your breath. When you have to breathe, put it back in the ocean. Just very simple things, making the kids love the wildlife like we did. Yeah. We would have starfish and conchs we could put in their hands. We would have lobster that would eat out of so their So they fingers. would get to learn, and they would get to engage with the wildlife, and then they would appreciate it more. Right. And then the next step was the Ninja Turtles came along in the 1985. Ninja Cowabunga. And they, the children really wanted to see it a green sea turtle. So I okay. went to the state, I said, I want to get an educational turtle, you know, for my educational program. And they, they said, well, they're endangered, you can't have them. But then they had a little echo, a little, unless you do something for them. I said, well, what do you need? They said, well, we need a rehabber. I said, well, what's a rehabber? They said, well, if the turtle gets hit by a boat, you take it to the vet, you pay the bill, you buy the medicine, you pay the bill, you buy the food, you pay the bill. And when you're healthy, you let them go. I said, well, I used to fix at 125 guys fixing Volkswagens. I guess they got <laughs> you, you got the VW repair, it's <laughs> turtle think, repair, VW repair, <laughs> same. Yeah, I figured if I could fix <laughs> Volkswagens, I could fix turtles. You know, they're kind of similar in shape. You know, the old transferable ones. skills. Exactly, and and you know, with Volkswagens, if they fix one, they're all similar. Same thing with turtles. You learn to fix one, it helps all the others. So I'm sure you, from, from that stage to where you are now, you've learned a ton about turtles. We certainly have. Now we have our own veterinary co uh, clinic, and as well as our hospital, and we're starting to do more and more research. Uh, and people ask me, why do I do that? I say, well, I gotta tell you, when you take one of these dinosaurs, put it back in the ocean, the feeling you get when you do that, nothing's better. You yeah, know, you take I it can only imagine, I mean, releasing it, going from, it's covered in tumors, yeah. It's not able to survive out there, and you bring it back to a place where it can go out and live a full life. That's amazing. Absolutely. We love what we do, and it all started out accidentally with the... With the hotel business and uh, VW mechanic. VW and then, <laughs> then hotel. And we had a chain of video stores, and that's what uh, bought... The, uh, that was a strip bar next door, and I sold off a chain of video stores. I had four or five little stores, one on each island, 
and I sold the video stores and we used the money to buy the building next door and make it into the, the world's first turtle hospital. This is the world's first, wait, you didn't, oh, I didn't world. know that. This is the world's first turtle hospital? Yep. And it was a strip bar. So that's bar like cutting first. edge. It, when it, was a, it used to be a strip bar. Yep. <laughs> and now it's the world's first turtle hospital. Yep. And now they're springing up all over the world with our encouragement and help. That's awesome. So we love doing it and the turtles need a lot of help. So cool. Thanks for sharing that. That's, oh, you're that's welcome. really cool. Like they're doing so many cool things here, guys. It's really super important for us to uh, take care of the turtles that are out there in, in, the, in the environment. And if you if they find one around the keys, they can bring it here, right? They have to just call, a, call, call, call us somebody or the Coast Guard it. or Florida Fishing Game, and they'll get rooted in here. We have ambulances that run 24 hours a day to go pick them up.